St. Mary's. Uh, yeah, you're going to be helping me a little bit of shooting. Hey guys, uh, we are starting a, it's pointing to me wrong, you're fine, don't fine. We're shooting a, uh, we're doing a one light workshop and this is just live, so I don't know if I'll be able to actually see what you guys are writing. Thumbs up, I'll answer questions later when I go back and look at this video. Uh, this is presented by Jeremy Lou Photography and Hatch Lab, um, which is a thing. Okay, I gotta find a home for this. Actually wrong. This looks cool. Let me grab that. Yeah, get close to that heater, guys. What? One more time? No, I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna leave it here, that way we can kind of focus on this. People can say, sorry for all the shakies. Cool. Thank you guys for coming. We might have a few more people showing up, but they will be late. So, um, we are going to go over, uh, you guys shoot strobes, does everybody shoot strobes here? Yeah. Um, an easy, hard? Oh. So, um, I, uh, I know that a lot of photographers are natural light photographers, and um, I feel like, I love natural light, I shot all day natural light today, it's beautiful, it's amazing. But at some points, your creativity starts to go away, or you start to do the same thing over, and then also you're limited on what, what's given, right? If it's a little bit of sunny outside or super sunny outside, you have to work with what the sun's giving you. You can't really create the shoot that you want. So, for instance, if a client comes in and says, "Hey, I want to do this super cool shot where the moon's doing this and this is doing this," and you're like, "Okay, when can I book that? Like, how do I know when?" It's, like, if I want to do a rain shot. Do you have to plan when it's raining, or do we call you when it starts raining, or what do we do? Um, we're not going to do any rain stuff today, but today's focus is mainly going to be how do you utilize strobes into our photography so that we're not relying, so that we get to control the light. We get to dictate what the shoot's going to do, and more importantly, we get to replicate this over and over and over again, right? So, my favorite way to shoot is uh, with a single light. Um, this is a one light workshop, so we're doing one light. We'll do like a two or three later. But one light is, is the way I like it. Um, I started one light simply because I couldn't afford more lights. Um, you buy one light and you see as, you can do as much stuff with it as you can. Okay, so um, today we're going to be working with the Alien B. What color is that? 800. 800, uh, which is a middle range for the Alien B. It costs about $349. Um, we're going to be using several different modifiers. Modifiers are what we put on the outside of the strobe. This is a soft box. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. It creates soft light. Within this uh, paneling, there's another little white mesh panel. Um, it's a diffuser. It goes through two levels of diffusion, creates soft light. We'll talk about what soft and hard are. Um, and it's sitting on just a regular old tripod. Bring that chair closer. Bring that chair closer. So so far. And then we'll actually do a couple little test shots with uh, my, my little models over there. And we'll put them here and I'll kind of show you what the light does as we revolve it around. Um, for those of you that shoot strobes, tell me about it. What do you think? You shoot strobes? I just shot strobe a couple of times. Cool. Why just a couple times? Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, it's fine. Yeah, before I can tell, um, that's, this is continuous light, right? No, nope. this will be a, a flash. So this will be a flash. So um, we'll put the model light on to see what the continuous light looks like. But today is all about how to use flash and how to utilize your camera to make it flash. Um, constant light's good, but you need more power for it. Uh, flash is amazing because it gives that one pop of light, and then your camera captures it at the exact same time, and you get a crazy amount of power. Uh, and also flash for creature subjects as well. So if you're, say you're shooting like a gymnast or a ballerina or something that you would jump, um, if you try to do that with continuous light, if you don't have enough power, they'll blur out, right? Um, they'll be running shooting through. With a flash, you can actually stop them in midair and create this really cool epic shot. Uh, I'm done kind of working that out. Yeah. Um, you shot shows before? You tried? <laughs> I a speed light, yeah, yeah. 
Speed light's a, speed light is a strobe. Uh, it's a little strobe. Can you see? Is that good? Uh, this is cheaper? Yeah. Oh, you bought the 600 Canon EX. Oh, God. I have so, the oh, you have the 9, yeah. So yeah. SB something. Yeah, it's an SB 900. Um, there's like other companies like uh, Yongnuo that makes some mines a Canon version. It's like 600 bucks. Yongnuo makes it for, uh, um, you can even put it on. on 120? Uh, for 100 bucks for the exact same flat. Yeah. So the money comes, and then speed lights are cool because they're more portable, or you know, you can move them everywhere, uh, but they don't produce enough power. I think, I can't remember, I, I won't even get into that. I, somebody was telling me like it takes like, for the SB800, or for the uh, Alien Beats 800, it takes uh, full power, I think it takes like four speed lights to match the power of this. That's what it does. Okay, so let's get into this real quick. Um, I'm going to show you guys, I have a black backdrop, which is just a black uh, board that I have in the back. And I do that so that we can see the difference in lighting when we, when we start to shoot with this. Um, when we sh the cool thing with shooting with um, strobes, um, and I know some people might hate on this, but you can shoot with theoretically any camera and any lens, no matter on the cost of that, and still create amazing work. Because you get to work with great light. Um, for instance, every time I shoot in the studio, my ISO is always 100. So I can get that with basically any camera that I can buy on the market right now. The reason that we buy the 5D Mark IVs, um, the newer cameras, is, is so that we can bump that ISO up and shoot in dimly lit situations and get amazing shots. With strobes, I don't have to worry about that anymore. I can create amazing enough, enough amount of light that I can shoot at ISO 100, uh, which is what we're going to be all today. So um, first tip, well, first just thing to remember from me, um, ISO 100 in studio, that's what I start with. Um, to keep it even more simple, I always set my camera to shutter 1 100th. I shoot in full manual in, in studio. Um, why would I shoot full manual? Why, yeah. why would, what, what's the benefit of shooting manual or post-op? You have the most control. Good, I have full control, right? I buy a great camera and I, I want to control it. So the computer in the camera is amazing in all cameras. What it does is it, it, it looks out, it sees what you got, and then it adjusts and tries to produce a, a, a shot that it thinks is perfect. Now, that's the issue, right? It thinks. A computer's set up to have one little setting, it reads 18% gray, so basically if I point out a black backdrop or a black dark anywhere, then it's gonna go, oh my god, it's super dark. I have to pump a ton of flash or light into this picture to brighten it up. When you take the picture off, so you look at it, you're like, this is super bright. Like, why did I do that? Right? And if you point it at the sky, it's going to go, crap, it's super bright. I'm gonna, and then you take the picture off, so it comes out way dark. Um, let's go to people. If you have uh, uh, a couple that has different color skin, right? Black bride, white groom. You focus on them, all of a sudden your camera doesn't really know how to focus it, or, or if you put it on auto, it doesn't know what to expose it for. So it comes out a little different. What we do as professional photographers or photographers, we want to go in and actually adjust our camera so that we can um, get the shot that we want and be a little creative. So if I want a shot that's a little darker, I get to create that rather than go, hope my camera's going to get this. The also, the other, the other bad thing about shooting an auto is that if you are taking 10 shots, most likely each shot's going to be a little bit different in auto. And, which is fine, but say you multiply that by 10 and you get 100 shots from a shoot, well you're spending most of your time now going to each image and trying to make it look like the one before so that you have a uniform set of photos. Too much work, we don't need to do that. So we set it on manual, um, we kind of work from there, okay? Who wants to be my model? <laughs> All right, you just gotta stay here, you can't watch that. <laughs> okay. Jamie, come on over. You can come over in a bit. All right, so uh, it's a little harder to see because we have a little bit of ambient. Well, can you turn off these lights above us? All right, Jamie, just sit right there. Okay. Yep, on the chair. All right, so we've dimmed everything a little bit, so hopefully we can see this. Cool. So, um, you're welcome, Audrey Horning. <laughs> okay, so we have Jamie there. 
a um, few things before we start shooting. I, um, I do everything in the middle. So whenever I set up my lights for anything, as soon as I put it up, um, Alien Bees has this auto, or it's, it's just a manual light, right? So there's nothing electronic. It's really simple to use. It's basically power up, power down. That's all we're doing. If I need more light, I power up. If I need less light, I power down. We put these attached for that simple reason where I wanted people to come in and actually manually play with it rather than go uh, with a light meter and say, oh my God, I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm pressing. I don't, what do these numbers mean? And that's just too much, right? Too confusing. It was confusing for me to start. So um, what I do is as soon as I put the light up, I pick any light, I put it up, and I put it at half power. And I leave it there. And I kind of gauge what I'm going to do with this. So since we're doing a one light, we only have to deal with one light. Um, I want you guys to look at the room. A question that Charles asked before we started was about um, ambient light, right? So do you guys know what ambient light is? It's a light that's provided naturally, let's say naturally. Um, but say if you go into a room and there's these lights that are on, or we have overhead fluorescent, we have window light coming in right here. That's ambient light. That's a light that we cannot control. Um, most likely we cannot control. Yeah, you can turn off lights, so whatever. Um, we can't control it. What we have to do as photographers is, uh, in a studio, is I always try to kill that ambient light. The cool thing is, is um, you can set your cameras to the lowest settings, and the settings I kind of talked about earlier, usually when you do that in any room, any studio, it will go into flat black, pitch black in your camera. When your camera, when you take a picture and it goes flat black, that you know that you are now, um, your, your ambient light doesn't matter. Does that make sense? Show you guys here. Um, I have a Canon 5D Mark III with a 70 to 200 Canon 2.8 version 2. Whatever. So we're going to set my camera to ISO 100. I'm going to go down to shutter 1 100. You guys remember my 100s? So I always start with that, that. And then um, the biggest thing in here is going to be your F stop, right? I, in a studio setting, I always want to try to shoot around F8. Why do I want to shoot at F8? It's in the middle. Detail. What? Detail. Detail, right? I like the middle because it's all middles. Detail. Also, I want to make sure that I'm getting my subject focused and not blurring anything out, right? But I know that if I need to go to 2.8 to do a creative cool shot, I can totally do that. But most likely in the studio, when I'm doing headshots, when I'm doing fashion, um, F8 is my starting number. And I will actually live there most of the time and adjust my light accordingly. If I need more light, bump it up. Less light, bump it down. So we're going to put this at F8. Now, I'm going to take a picture of my subject. And this is what happens. Pitch black, right? Pitch black. So what does that mean now? Cool. When, um, I don't know if you guys remember the old studio over at Hatch, Hatch 1. Um, all the lights were on, even at these settings, when I took a picture at ISO 100, shutter 1 100, and FSOP uh, 8.0, it was still pitch black. And it was bright in there, right? Even if we turn off on, on all these lights and take it, it's still black. Um, Charles, the shoot that I was doing yesterday, I posted a little headshot behind the scenes, and all the ambient lights were on, the lights were on. I had the same settings, I took a picture, pitch black. The only time this would affect your shots is if you take that picture and for some reason a ton of light and you start to see something. If you start to see something, we need to adjust things. We can go higher with our f-stop, we can go higher with our shutter, um, and usually our ISO is kind of maxed out. Uh, so now I know from this point on, anything that I take using this strobe, I get to create that light. Nothing else will affect it. This light's not gonna affect it at all. My picture's gonna be completely based off the lighting that I use. Are we good? That's your first goal, to always get to pitch black. So, um, we have Jamie sitting there, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda chat a little bit about what this light's gonna do, okay? So we first off had a softbox um, create soft light. So there's two kinds of light. Let's call it hard and soft. I don't know if hard's a technical term. I think it was cool for this. So we have a soft light, and what that means is, the um, easiest way I always say is the, the more stuff you got going on with your face, the softer the light you need. So if you're shooting um, an elderly person with a lot of wrinkles, who doesn't want those wrinkles, um, and you want to fill in all those little gaps in their face where they have acne, 
The softer the light, the better it is for you. Soft light will come onto your face. Soft light will come onto your face and then slowly fade away, right? Whereas a hard light will create dark shadows. It will hit my face and then go super dark from there. Um, and I'll show you a little example of this. Now tell me, if I move the light closer to my subject, is the light going to be softer harder. or harder? harder? The closer. Soft. Softer. Right? Mind blown. I was always like, dude, the closer the light is, like, the worse that is for you, bro. It's not. So the closer the light, I want you to think of the, the light as a blanket of light, right? The closer this bad boy gets to my subject, look straight, Jamie. So, I don't know if you guys see this on TV, but the closer my light gets to my subject, the more it fills her face and wraps her face around like a blanket of light. Does that make sense? The further I go away, uh, the light's dimming, but also I get more contrast and more shadows. So, if you look at her face right here, you can start to see more lines in her dimples right here. And if I bring it closer, those lines are start to go away. So, when you're shooting with natural light, this is for the natural light people, when you're shooting with natural light, you always go for a big light source like a window, right? I want you to think of this softbox, it's just a giant window that you can put wherever you want. So if you shoot, always shoot with your subject kind of facing the window like this, looking, why not use a softbox, stand next to it, and pretend it's a window? If you always use windows like these on a wall, and you need to reflect something back, why not do the same thing and push it back? So just think of this as a big window. Let's keep it simple. So, we have our subject sitting here. Um, let's play a little bit. So, we're creating a soft light on our subject. We have a girl. So I'm gonna create this soft, easy light. Even looking at her face right now, um, I always put my soft box, the bottom of the soft box always goes to the chin of my subject. So it's like right there, I just kinda look straight through. Pop this down a little bit. Now, my main goal with this light that I'm creating right now for this shot is to create a beautiful even light on her face, but also to give her some catch lights in her eyes. Uh, do you guys ever look at catch lights when you look at photos? Mm -hmm. Do you guys know what catch lights are? For those that don't know, catch lights are what you see in the eye, catching light in the eye. Um, when you ever you look at like any photographs and magazines or anything, look for those catch lights and you can actually usually tell how the shot is done. Yeah, like you'll see like this really cool halo, or you'll see like a little round one right here. You're like, oh, they use a softbox here, they use a reflector here. Um, and then you can kind of mimic that play. I love deconstructing images. I highly suggest everybody do that. So looking at her now, we have a traditional 45 degree, also known as loop lighting. Correct me if I got that wrong. Um, also known as loop lighting, and we call it loop lighting because the light comes down and then gives a little loop right here. 45 degrees, so I call this 45 degree. Whenever I have my assistant set up the slide, I'm like, I need a 45 degree coming from the right. And so this is a 45 degree coming here, right? Because this is, is this zero? Zero, 45, 90, okay? Yeah, bye. Okay, so. What's up, Yeah, here's my words. Yes. Okay. So um, we're at 45 degree. Oh, you can't see. You can't see. You can't see. Oh, you can see her a little bit. Okay. So this light's 45. 45 degrees from my subject. She's pointing straight at me. One light setup. Um, okay. Super easy. Okay. So remember, I have, so just so you guys know, I have my flash power at the middle. It's at like a quarter and something. So it's not technically a half power. It's a little bit low. But again, my settings are 1 100, ISO 100, F8. And we're just going to take a little shot of this monkey. <laughs> and then we get, I mean, I don't know if I got lucky or what. But we get this. So if you guys look at her nose, you see how that's, a little more contrasting than I like. How can I remedy this? Now oh, you guys can't tell. How can I, 
how can I get that shadow on the side of her face gone a little bit? We can move the light that way. What else can we do? Move the head. I can move her head to it. Uh, by the way, everybody, I do most of my stuff in camera and not in Photoshop. Um, what about bringing the light closer to our subject? Remember how I said the farther away it is, the more contrast to the light? So what if I bring this just closer to her? We're going to have to adjust the power, but all I'm doing is bring this closer to her. And let's not adjust the power for this first shot. Let's see what it looks like. Okay. Eagles. Other table for this one? Or that, whatever, yeah. Okay, so we're super close to her. I'm going to go zoom it in. And I'll get a little of the softbox in place just at the end. Okay, mucho brighter, but our shadows are starting to go away a little bit on the side of her nose. Right? So we have this really cool one light setup. <clears throat> uh, and this becomes a little fashiony, so I'm going to kind of shoot this as if I would shoot a little fashiony with her. So I'm going to move this back just a little. The power and can the folks at see that photo? What? I don't know if they can. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jamie, turn this way for me. So I'm gonna have her turn towards the light, put your left foot onto the bar. Jamie for a little bit. So see how that light's kind of hitting her nice and evenly? I'm going to 
lets him throw this bad boy on. And I want you to see what happens to her face. Whoa. This just velcros on the side of this palsy buff. You see him? Okay. Oh, you're good, man. I don't know if people see my booty, but it's here. What up, nerd? Nerd! 
Okay, it's not mine. So yeah. Cool. Chin forward. Down just a little. Turn your head this way. Good. So why am I turning your head this way? Simple question. Where's the light? I want to, if I turn it turn the other way, turn the other way, she just gets darker, right? Turn this way. Oh, photographers, friends of mine, all photographers that are friends of mine, do not be afraid to adjust your client in any way. Don't be afraid to move their hair. Don't be afraid to adjust their jacket. If you're afraid of touching people, it's weird. Um, I have that video here, so I'm gonna go check it out. I was a massage therapist in the past, so I touch people all the time, and the way I touch people is not like, hey, can I touch you real quick? I just go up and just literally go, that, that, and it, it's the mannerism that you do it. But if you're a creepy dude, pernicious guys, if you come up creepy, like, hey, I'm just gonna twitch this real quick, like, it's gonna creep people out. But that's your job to go in there and adjust them, make sure they look good, because if they get the photos back and one hair's out of place, guess who's photoshopping all those hairs? You, it's your fault. Again, do as much as you can in camera and out of camera. Easy peasy. All right, so what we're gonna do is Ron's gonna get a little closer to her. Perfect. I'm gonna do a nice, tight little head shot. Look up at that light. So I headshot I was on the Oh yeah. Um, Ron, will you lose that real quick and then I have to show them out. Okay, Ryan, look right here. Look at that. Okay, and then Ron, same thing, just put that as close to it as you can. Okay, so do you guys think that did a big difference? We're using the silver reflector out there, everybody. So here's the first one. Why would we want to add a backlight to a subject or, or highlight to a subject? So if I need more light, I'll just adjust my light accordingly. 
I was like, oh, this is too dark, this is too bright, got it. Uh, this one, I want to keep everything black. So what I'm going to do is have my subject sit straight towards me. Yeah. Sit straight that way. And we now put the light to the side. So what's going to happen with this light? What do you think is going to happen? Just by looking at her face. Just half face. Yeah. Half her face, super green. How could you use this shot uh, in real life? Who could you shoot for this? Who would like this? Who would like just half her face lit? Guys. Dudes, right? Who else? What, what type of girls? What type of girls? Some models. Uh, fitness. Right? So remember how I said that a contrasty light will define more? We'll pull out acne, we'll pull out wrinkles. It'll, you'll see them more, right? With the contrast light, we'll use a soft box to get those away. If I'm shooting out of the woman, I'm gonna be softening the light as much as I can because I know she's gonna be like, you need to make me 50 times or 50 years younger. I'm gonna get all that light all up in her face. But what if I'm shooting fitness and I wanna show all those little ribs and abs and stuff? Contrasty, gridded light. If you're shooting any fitness person and they want that, everything should be gridded, nothing should be open because if you start to soften the light, all of a sudden the abs aren't abs anymore. It's just a flat belly and you're like, eh, cool buddy, but whatever. So I'm gonna take this little picture right here. We'll kind of put the, the bottom into it too. Give me a cool pose, bro. Yeah, cool pose. Do a cool this. I'm gonna put Chloe in there if you can't do a cool pose. Oh. Yeah. Lean forward. Chin up. No smile. Be cool about it, bro. <laughs> Baller. So let's look at this. Half her body's lit up, right? But do you notice how part of her face is still lit? How can that be when the light's on the side of her face? What did we talk about when we first? Something about blanket. You got rid of the Like the alien's gone. It's just black. The light is still coming out and wrapping around her. If I decided, hey, I do not want to move my light, I need to change my modifier. If I got a smaller modifier, the light wouldn't wrap as much. If I got a giant modifier, it would wrap even more. So if I want to keep this modifier here, and I don't want light inside of her face, what should I do? Oh, good. What else can I do that's way easier because I'm by myself? And we're going to feather it up this way. Now it's going to hit this side of her face and hopefully not touch any of that. So it's just a play, right? We're going to play. Get that pose here, lady. Turn the head this way so it's straight on to me. Right there. Mm -hmm. You. Now we're just looking at the side of her face. Half the face is gone, right? All we did was move it around. Because everything's starting to kind of, it's so easy. Everything's just kind of moving around. Keep it a little simple, right? Um, so from right here, I want to go into let's let's do some soft light stuff. Let's raise. We'll make the background a little bit brighter uh, without adjusting the camera. It's just light. So if you guys have noticed, I haven't changed anything in my camera. Super easy, right? When you're outside, you're literally like like this. Inside, I set it to the same. I'm just moving my lights. What? Cool 
So I'm going to shoot on the side of this just a little so I don't get that hole in the way. Not changing anything. Even light, right? We're getting even easy light. So I don't have any shadows in the back. Why? She's far enough from the backdrop that the light is doing this. Right? But let's get a shadow going. So I you know a lot of people have the issue, especially in the studio, where they're shooting and there's like a shadow on the ground. Uh, the reason is, is that their light is too far from the subject, and also uh, the light is aimed that the background's getting, and it's a hard, it's a harsh light. Is what's happening? Remember the harsher the light, the more shadow you have uh, at the beginning of the day or the end of the day. Your shadow is going to be super long and dark. Um, I'll be darker as, as the sun's higher, but you know what I'm saying. So we're going to put this right here. I'm going to bring this a little lower to lower it down here. My light's literally just flooding this area. This is very maximum shoot, right? Where they just kind of put a girl in the back and pop that light. Boring! Okay, so we have to slide off to the side a little bit. Give me like hand on the hip, bro. So, let me see if I need more contrast. If you see this, the light change, the light fall, mm -hmm. we don't want that. I typically don't want that. So, I never want my sun to just close to the backdrop. The closer you put it, the more effect it's going to have on it. It's fine, but that's your creativity level that gets to play, right? So, let's bring this over here with the backdrop onto her. I'm going to bring this light a little farther away to make a little more contrast. It's going to shadow the one. Then 
they're going to need this light to be perfect for them. For people like me, I want to see. Alright, so, main part of the beauty dish. Fun fact, I made my own, used it one time, lost it. I made it out of a salad bowl. It was awesome. So how this works is, this goes on to this. We're going to put this little reflector thing back. We're not going to use that yet. And we're going to use this raw. Photographers like it raw. I was at uh, picking up the girls from school right before here. Uh, and some guy's like, what does that mean on your car? Because I must say it's like a raw. He was getting mad. I'm like, you know what I'm so sorry. Okay. All right, hold this, pull you forward just a little bit. If you want to sit down or stand up? So we have a beauty dish just on a regular light stand. It works better on a C stand because you can move it around. But what else? Let's put it on lights. you guys do? This is your most commented live video yet. What? Um, 
So you take a picture, and all of a sudden they're frozen, but the background's all blurry. Super cool effect, right? That's because flash freezes. You have to have enough flash to freeze. Now, the other side of it is your f-stop. A little cheat that I don't recommend doing all the time because it messes up your depth of field, but it's a good cheat. If I'm too lazy, or say my lights are really far away for some reason, to adjust my flash, I can play with my f-stop and make the back and make the subject darker and brighter without touching my light. I'll show you what that means. Right now we're at 100, f8 still, ISO 100. My ambient is fine. I can tell because I can do this, and it's well, almost just black. Pretty much just black, right? Something comes in that. So I'm going to take this picture, and it's going to be so bright summer. It's going to be so bright summer. All bright. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with my f-stop. If I do lower, is that brighter or darker? Lower than the Lower than the number. It opens up the aperture, so is that brighter? brighter. So my picture's too bright, so I want to go higher with my number. So let's just do that. Let's go up to like, I don't know, like 14. Let's see if that changes anything with my flash. 14, 18. Right? Let's max it out. So 32. A little cheat. When you're shooting around the F8 to F14, doesn't really matter. Remember, F stop is your, your depth of field. But if I all of a sudden go all the way to 2.8, I may be bringing more light from a lighter powered flash. But I'm also not changing the depth of field. If I go to 32, I'm pulling everything, all the detail, and I might not want that. So, a little cheat. I'm going to bring it down, and I'm going to do what normal people should do, and just not be lazy. So, I went, the cool thing with this light is that I went from one half power, and I'm going down to one eighth. And we're just going to play with it. We're going to see if that works. Remember that um, a beauty dish is amazing if you have a cheap light. If you have a cheap light that doesn't produce enough power, get a beauty dish. I literally went from a half power from using softbox to a quarter power, so I don't need as much light power to get the same effect. Does that make sense? Follow. All right, well, ready? Give me some poses. One, perfect, do it again. Two, perfect, do it again. <laughs> okay. Still a little bright, so I'm gonna bring this down to 116. <laughs> Alright. You like faces. Give it to me, girl. One, perfect. Uh, two, look at that light. Uh, get it. Big black, go! <laughs> perfect. So we're getting these really cool. Now, what's the first thing you guys notice about these as far as the shadows? It's darker than Or Yeah. It's contrasting. It should be, right? Mm -hmm. I use the beauty dish for contrast. I want contrast in the picture. Um, how can I eliminate contrast from here? What? So we call this a sock. Just goes up and over. Automatically, it's going to make the light softer. Also, what it's going to do is going to less power is going to come through. Less flat power is going to raise my power to where I was. Without changing anything, we'll do that. What might be the benefit of shooting at a lower power with your flash? Close to higher power. So those of you who have shot strobes. Um, it's like reloading a gun, right? If, that's not that, that's horrible. You like it? What? Guns are stupid. Guns are stupid, I like guns. <laughs> so, it's a reload, recycle time on the flesh. Uh, the higher the power, the longer it takes for it to come back. If I'm shooting, somebody likes to do this model and stuff, right? Moving too much. I have to wait until my flash gets back to grab that shot. Otherwise, I can grab the shot early, the lights have to be ready for it. So it'll be like half power light, a little bit of light. Um, for example, I just did that with this. I shot too fast. A little bit of light came through, but not enough. If you're shooting, 
Um, like your tag team people, if you guys are going to work with units and two people are shooting at the same time, all of a sudden they look at like, I'm not getting anything. Well, the flash is recycling. But if you can bring this power low, you can just go all day long. And you'll get all the shots that you want. Okay? All right, we added a softbox, or we added a sock to this. We're almost time for Q&A. Okay, uh, push your arms down like this. Be super cute about it. You can push on the side of the chair, lean forward. Go, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, just like this. <laughs> Little smiles. All that talking, push up my power. But it's uh, but also if you're going so from one low power to high power is fine. But when you go from high power to low power, you have to uh, dump the flash okay. because it's already you know, you have that, yeah. Okay. Just gotta get rid of it. But I, I just do it as like a test. I'll see if my client will be ready. When you do this, you walk back and you just say, "Woo!" And I'm like, "Bro, I went to Eddie." Look up the light. At the light. Beautiful. Think of monkeys. <laughs> Think of poop. <laughs> so, um, what that does is it creates a softer shadow in the light around your cheeks, around all that. Beauty dishes. Uh, let's use it as a ring flash. Let's see what that looks like, okay? So, what we're going to do is we're going to put this. Right in front. And I'm going to try to shoot up into her right here. Just like this. Uh, let's make this light a little straight on. Very modely, right? Right, though? Very modely. Give it to me. Work it. Work it. Oh, yeah, girl. Get it? Huh. Say the alphabet. P. <laughs> so your question. Okay. So we're creating now a flat light. So we're shooting this up. Make sense? Uh, this right here is a constant light. Oh, we said a ring flash here. Hey, if anybody knows where a ring flash went, that'd be great. Give it back to me. Um, but you shoot through this. And it creates this like, like, in. Cool. Uh, the whole time we haven't really been talking about it, everything I focus on is catch lights. I'm making sure that there's light in your eyes. Um, I always feel like if there's no light in the eyes, the person's dead. There's a dead person, they can kill us out. Cool. All right, does anybody have any questions? Uh, I work a part of their face, just a part of their face. Yeah, yeah well, you ask the client that, right? So yeah. like, like, I like this, I don't know, obviously I want to fill that light a little bit more. But I always look at the part of their face, but I put it on the other side, I'm going to get a shadow. So her part's right there. Yeah, so if you put the light here, you're going to get this shadow that comes back down in there. Um, all right, let's see, what else? Let's get a little bit of... Uh, So why don't we get a little creative with this, okay? Okay, Ron, can you hold this for me? So let's play a little bit, right? Because we have a studio, we get to play. So we're going to try to keep the same distance I was from her a second ago. It's so we look up that way. Right there, yeah, just like that. Let's see what this does. Ooh, look up a little higher. Perfect. So we get something cool like this. Rob, you do the same thing, but go from low to up. I uh, just go on her face. You just hold it. Okay. 
Look at me, Claw. Put your hands like this. Look down. Actually, look, look up a little bit. Go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, we call this monster lighting. You shoot, uh, you notice I don't put the light under my center? Because that's bad. Like, you don't want any shadow coming through the nose. I have seen a few photographers, um, you could even lighter above them. Um, put a light on the ground to shoot up. Um, well, you know, will you grab me the, uh, the, um, so the last thing I want to show you guys before we go Q&A is uh, the Westcott eyeliner. This thing's freaking amazing. We're going to do clamshell lighting, but a little bit differently. What clamshell lighting is as simple as a two-light setup. A light up top, a light below, clamshell. What this does is it fills in all the shadows right in here. Makes it super beautiful and bright. Um, and it also creates an amazing catch light in the eyes. The cool thing with this bad boy is Westcott eyeliner. Um, it's pretty cool. And what it does is um, works with the natural shaping of the iris, of the eye. So we're going to set her up and we're going to shoot her. We're going to set her up and shoot her and create the illusion of a clamshell lighting with using only one light. It actually is probably cheaper to buy the light with by this thing. It is. But that thing's cool. So we're gonna get this all set up. All right, Chloe. And you actually like to just point one straight on her and one under her? Yep, you will have one on, one below. And you've also seen this with headshot where people are, have models holding reflectors below them. Oh, okay. They hold their own reflector and do that. Oh. Is there a big difference between that one and the reflector? Yeah, the shape of it. And you'll see the shape is going to make stand on it. Okay, so what this is doing is just creating uh, a nice reflection here. I'm going to put the light correctly. Um, we're actually going to use, let me get that face off. Joyful, joyful, I'll fly on fish. Joyful, joyful. Forward just a little bit. I gotta show this out. Shit out just a little bit. Bring this down a little bit. Hand sideways. Put the knee in. Little smiles. Oh, good smiles, baby. Good smiles, baby. Hold, don't move, like, hold up, uh, pull it out. 
Okay, same thing going through this way. You want to see the difference already, right? Move forward, space forward. The lap. You have a person that wants to come in and do a headshot. White backdrop. How easy it is to do, just add this into the thing, do an amazing white backdrop. Let's bring it back in, I'll do just a white backdrop. Um, this is my go-to headshot for um, older women, or women that are kind of concerned. Super easy shot. You get an adult in there, have them play, you just talk, you grab a bunch of shots, you're done. Easy peasy. Sell those for like a thousand dollars piece. Alright, so you're done. Thanks, bro. Alright, um, let's do a little QA while we're here. And that's the one light workshop. Does anybody have any questions about confusion? Need to go over anything real quick? Ask away. But the light that you have right now, you said that's a diffuser. This the white part's a diffuser. Okay. So there's silver on the inside to push the light out. Without the diffuser, I'll create a contrasty light as well. So the part that's inside is not all the way connected. It's supposed to be, but it's not, it's not doing enough for me to worry about it. So you're out doing out for two and there's no partly sunny, partly shady. Yes. So I would, yeah. So they, they sell, they sell speed lights. Speed lights are amazing outside because of the battery. They make uh, batteries for these. So my kid, um, Halsey Buff, they're called Vagabond Minis, Vagabond Minis Two, um, and basically it has a couple of USB things and then two outlets. You charge the battery with it. Freaking amazing. It runs anything that goes into an outlet. One can power two different lights. Um, but it goes into there. Outside's a little different, right? So it's all about your ambient. If you're outside and you put a flash next to somebody, like you're doing here, you go to 100 F8, 100, it may not work. Uh, mate. It might not work um, simply because it's not, um, the ambient is changing all the time, especially during the day. So in here, 100 F8, 100, got me to pitch black. Pitch black is awesome for me. You have to figure out if you want to go pitch black outside. If you want to go pitch black outside, what can you do to your camera to make it pitch black? And then from then, you add your flash. But what if you don't want to pitch black? What if you want to get Lake Tahoe in the background? What do you do to your camera? That could be a totally separate workshop, but to keep it simple, I'd go one stop under. You guys know when your camera does that little gauge, it's a zero, one, two, minus one, minus two. That's your exposure gauge of what your camera is automatically capturing out there. So what I do to get my stuff outside, to keep it really simple, is I go one stop under. So I hold my camera up to where I'm shooting my, my landscape, and then I just play with my settings until it goes to one stop under. Once it's one stop under, I know that once I take a picture, the backdrop is one stop under. It's a little bit darker than normal. Why would I make my backdrop darker? Because it's better than light. You have to keep it. You don't want to over. Right, so have you guys ever shot with the sky? 
You know, have you ever exposed your client, shot your client, but the sky goes white? So that happens because it's darker down here than it is in the heavens. So if you were to expose, if you were to expose for your clients, it wouldn't be as bright. So obviously the client's more important, so the back uh, the sky goes white. If you guys have ever done landscape, your whole exposure has changed, right? All of a sudden now, especially if you're shooting during the day, your camera can't get darker. You cannot do anything. If you try to shoot the clouds, you have to adjust everything, and all of a sudden you're like, crap, I have to make the darker and darker and darker background. So what I have to do as a photographer is make sure my, my background shows up. So if I do one stop under, everything's a little bit darker in the background, just so my camera can read it better. My flash then becomes proper exposure. My flash hits my subject the correct light that it should be. And then all of a sudden it's and they show up the background. Um, it's easy to learn, it's a little tricky, especially I remember a couple times in weddings I would like freak out. Um, but now you kind of dial it in. So that can be a solely separate workshop and when the warm, weather gets warmer, we'll do something up on the roof and I'll show you guys how to expose for the, the city of Reno. Like we have to get the city of Reno the backdrop and all that. You see if any questions are showing up at all? I don't know if you can even see it. Um, but yeah. But yeah. So they sell the Vagabond Mini, I think they're like 200 bucks for the battery. 250. Uh, 250, and then there's a new one. But yeah, you don't have to use it for just photography. I mean, literally, you put it in your car, and if you have to charge anything, your laptop, computer, or battery goes into it, you just charge the battery. But it's made for this game. And why do you choose a softbox over the umbrella? Like, what's the difference? Um, I like the softbox because it houses the light, and it makes the light actually a little bit softer. Umbrellas are amazing, they're just big. And if you don't have a friend outside with you, if I shoot outside and a little wind comes, it goes away. Um, but I use big umbrellas. Tomorrow I'll be shooting at St. Mary's event and I'll be using just umbrellas. Um, because Did I have a smaller space. Do they have a soft space. thing that the umbrellas too? Or? The what? Do they have a soft yeah. thing that goes yeah. over? Yeah, they have a diffuser that goes over. Um, some umbrellas you can buy. And umbrellas are cheaper too. So if you're on a money crunch and you just want a bunch of modifiers, awesome. Um, remember that the white ones, you can uh, umbrellas you can shoot through, makes a softer light. Um, you can also have the black ones that you shoot back into and it comes back down. Remember the farther light has to travel more contrasty, but it's all the same concept. It's all the same concept. And honestly, if you use a light correctly, nobody has any idea uh, what camera you're using and what flash you're using and what modifier you're using. Um, if somebody can come up to me and, 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 and any professional photo and go, oh, I know who's using the Paul Seabus system with this, or who's using the Pro Photo, like, whatever, you know, whatever. How many people will this work with, Just As many people as, I mean, I've done weddings with one light and to like 40 people. Yep. When you have multiple people, uh, how you have to do it is, Chloe, come on over. Um, say you have a group of people here, right? Remember that you just have to have enough power. So there's a few things that you have to change a little bit. Um, when I have multiple people with one light, my f-stop goes down so I can bring more power into it. I also make sure that everybody is left and right of each other. So nobody's in front or behind of each other because of my low f-stop, so I don't blur anybody behind me. But let's just say we're not thinking about that. What you want to do is you want to make sure that your light, so say there's a group of people, Chloe, uh, this person's the bride and groom at a wedding or whatever. I have my light high up, out of frame, just out of frame. And I point my softbox, so I make the softbox long this way, and I make sure the center of it is hitting the far third of my grouping. Why do I do that? Because it's going to spray it over. Exactly. I also don't want the main part of my light hitting the middle. It's not going to spread in the middle and spread evenly. Right now my light's going, if you just picture the light, it's coming out to here, and then this part's coming all the way out to here. So you can do it with more light. It's way easier with more lights, but if you're shooting, it happens a lot of times, let's go do headshots, and all of a sudden you go do headshots and there's, we need a group photo. And you're like, oh shit, you didn't tell me that. So now you have to like adjust your one light to make a group photo. So, this will fill as many people as you can. You are limited by the amount of power, um, by your camera settings, uh, by your camera equipment itself, um, the, the wider you can go. <coughs> um, the better gear, the easier it is. But if you have a if you have an Alien B 1600, you should be fine. You should be fine. You know, you never want to put the light right over them. Like I see it all the time, people put like an umbrella light right here, up and down. They have one light, and, you know, it makes sense, right? One light, let's put it in the middle, let it scatter everywhere. It looks like shit. It's literally it looks like your flash is on your camera, and you're just.
Um, yeah. Yeah. Don't use your arm camera flash. Ever. Ever. Yeah. My, my camera's gonna come with it anyway. You spend more money on a camera than they take away. Bunch of jerks. What else? Any other questions? Awesome. Cool, guys. So that will conclude our one light workshop. Uh, I'll go through and comment these later. Do you use any uh, high speed? Um, I do on my speed lights, not on these. Um, instead of, uh, the question was if we use any uh, HSS high speed sync. Um, I actually prefer using filters on my lenses. Um, do you guys know what high speed sync is? It's where you, so our, our flashes are limited, our cameras are limited when using flash. We can only go to a max of one two hundredth of a shutter speed. The reason this is, is because your camera uh, and flash can only capture so much light. So your shutter goes one two hundredth, right? In that one two hundredth of a max, all the light has to get in at that time. If you go higher than that, it opens and closes a little bit faster. All the light doesn't, it, it, it'll actually close before all the light comes in. You can tell when you look at some of these photos and there's a little black bar at the bottom or a black bar at the top because they're using too high of a flash, or about a shutter speed for the flash to come in. And it's like me trying to jump through a window and it cuts off my foot. I need the window to stay open enough for my whole body to get through. My camera maxes out at 1 200th. My old Canon 7D, I think was the most, was 1 250th. Okay, cool. So I wanna go shoot outside somewhere and I wanna shoot my subject, but it's really bright outside. I need to get my shutter up to like 1 4,000th. How do I do that? High-speed sync allows your flash to uh, either shoot faster, slower, whatever it does, um, in order to get all of that light into your camera by the time the shutter closes. I use mine with my speed lights are built in, but what I like to do instead of adjusting my shutter is I just buy polarizer filters for my uh, lenses. It's like putting sunglasses on. It tricks my camera thinking it's darker than it really is, so I can adjust my settings lower. So instead of going to one four thousand for the shutter, I can go, it's like, hey, it's super dark, so I can go down lower to like 1 100th, 1 80th, and use my flash like normal. I need more flash power, obviously, because I need to push out the flash, but it makes the background darker. And what it does is it blurs everything out. With high speed sync, you want to shoot everything on f2.0, 2.8, and it blurs everything out in the back and creates this really cool cinematic feel. Um, it's freaking beautiful, but I don't use it all the time. But I, I prefer polarizers. When you start to shoot, do you start with the grid on, or do you start like uh, it depends on your personal preference and where you're at. I always, I don't have a grid on my soft boxes to go that are in my car. Um, I just adjust my light around um, and because I can put the light as far or close as I need to for my subject. Yeah, but if you have a grid, it, it doesn't change anything. It just makes more contrasty light. You can aim it a little closer. Um, for instance, if you want to shoot your subject in the middle of a field or in the middle of a group of people, and you need the light just to hit them and not the other people around, but you want to get the illusion that they're in a group of place, then you want to get it. You want to be able to shoot them, but you plan ahead on that, right? So, um, yeah, grid is just to target your light. It's just to narrow down that beam of light. It's a sharp pound. One of my clients talking about that. He goes pound, and he goes That's a snail. Good? Awesome guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I will respond to comments later. I didn't get to see any of them, so sorry if I missed something. If I answered it, then high five. Uh, feel free to keep commenting throughout this video and I'll keep checking it. And you end that? You end that? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jeremy. Thanks guys.